I work for General Dynamics NASCAR. We're a shipbuilding company in San Diego. This is Jesus Rojas, Top 3 Steel Manager. Yep. And I'm Larry Forrest, I work in the safety department. This is our shipyard backpack tool bag. We created this shipyard backpack tool bag because in 2004, OSHA came out with the, with the subpart P rule stating that anything in the shipyard had to be fire retarded. So the problem with that is that there's nothing out there available that we could just go to an REI store and buy. Literally, there was nothing that was fire retarded. So we, we had to contact the vendor, and this is what we came out with. The problem with this is, as you can see, our bag's average weight is 30 to 40 pounds. This resulted in 21 injuries uh, with workers' compensation uh, claims at $980,000. So that's almost a million dollars. We said, we better do something about it. So we first came out with this tool bag here. Uh, and we just jumped into it. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what a backpack should, should, uh, should have on it. So this was strike two here. We sort of upgraded, but it still wasn't working. So what we did is created uh, a team of hourly employees, our agronomist, our vendor, and the safety department, and said, what, the concept of a hike, hiking bag, let's do that on this bag. So what we did is we made the foam much uh, uh, thicker. We attached it to the bag so it wanted, uh, for stability. We added a torso support. And for comfort, we also have the tools that go in here so we don't want the tools digging into your back. And then, most importantly, we added a waist strap, a padded waist strap. So if you know any, if you know about hiking bags, uh, most of the weight will be distributed to your body if you put on a waist strap. So the idea here is that all the weight's on your shoulders now, but once you put on the waist strap, and adjust it, it's now moving on to your waist and hips. And so now it's loose up here, as you can see. Now you attach the sternum strap and then adjust it down. Now it's like a hiking bag where I'm free. I can climb up different types of ships, uh, ladders, confined spaces, and my hands are free. Uh, this is the smaller version that our sister company, Bath Ironworks, chose to, to uh, implement after they saw our bag. So they, they took our concept and made a smaller version of it. Uh, this has been in play for about 18 months, where we were averaging about two claims a year for injuries related to the bag. Now, we're so far 18 months injury free with no claims when, when we're using this type of bag. All right, excellent. And is this your first Ergo Cup competition? This is my first, this is our first entry into the Ergo Cup. All right, well, we wish you guys luck. Thank you. Thank you. In South Carolina, we implemented the 3 in 1 Cam Lock. The reason why we call it the 3 in 1 Cam Lock is we combine three procedures in one simple task under this decision. The first step that we created was talking the fuel pump. Once we set the internal fuel pump in place, our machine will actually torque this plate will torque this fuel pump, which alleviates about 120 pounds of force. The next thing we've done, 2013, this was an Ergo Cup winner, the Grommet installation tool. We take our grommets and we install those in three separate locations on our 3-in-1 cam block. The third and final element of the 3-in-1 cam block is going to be our plate level. It takes about 40 pounds of force to install this plate level in place, and we have a plunger that's going to do it for us. To activate our machine, we put an ergonomically friendly lower and raise lift assist so our associates don't have to manually lift and lower this lid. Once it's in place, we have two hand safety controls to keep our associates' hands out of any pinch points. Once the machine is activated, all three steps are done in a matter of eight seconds. Once the step is complete, the Ergo Friendly race switch is activated, raises the lid up for the associates, we have a completed product. Some ergonomic interventions include the uh, lower and lift switch. We also have a scissor jack incorporated into our 3-in-1 cam lock 
which gives us nine inches of vertical adjustability for all of our associates of all sizes. We also put ergo-friendly casters on our three-in-one cam lock, which makes it portable. The associate can customize their work environment in any location. We're GE Aviation. We're from Asheville, North Carolina. In our facility there, we make critical rotating parts for jet engines. What you see here is a large forward fan shaft for the GENX engine. It goes on the Boeing uh, Dreamliner plane. What we have is, our issue was in the deburb process of this part. This part is one of five engine shafts that we have um, of various sizes, all of them weighing over 100 pounds. Um, and the operators would you know, load these onto their workbench by a crane or either an assisted lift. Um, they had a really hard time maneuvering the part around, trying to deburr all these little small features in there. Um, a lot of sharp edges and a lot of burrs that were left on there um, that they had to deburr by hand. And there was a lot of poor postures, you know, bending over and reaching, um, neck bends, back bends, um, and just maneuvering the, you know, 100 plus pound part all around the workbench. Um, initially, we had our deburr apartment cent uh, centralized. And so in the deburr area, you know, they would not necessarily do the same part every day. And so we had a kind of job rotation. We went to a teaming concept where we have high performance work teams that are self-directed uh, based on specific product lines, which means that the people or the employees working on products would work on the same products so they get to know the delivery schedules, the costs, um, and the different aspects associated with that product line. The downside of this is that meant the deeper operator was going to start doing this shaft every single day. We got zero volunteers to, to work on this part just because it was so physically demanding and taxing um, to do that job. So what we did is we brought together all the operators, um, the tool room, and all of our tooling you know, employees, and we said we need to come up with a, with a solution for this. Um, they hand sketched a bunch of different ideas on you know, napkins and just said, hey, you know, these are kind of some of the ideas we think would work. And we gave that to our tooling department. And our tooling department took those napkin drawn solutions and came out with a you know, wonderful product here. Um, what you see here is not the first revision. We brought it out to the floor. The guys worked on it. You know, they used it. And they said, we like it, but we'd like to you know, switch it around a little bit. We made a lot of modifications here and there. And just kept working through it. Um, operator feedback to the tool department. Continuous improvement. Came up with an even better solution. Um, now you can see this part. Um, the part mechanically raises and lowers from zero to 90 degrees. Um, it spins freely on here on bearings and then it rotates 360 degrees this way. And then it also goes up and down vertically to accommodate operators of different heights. So literally you can put this part into any position you want to deburr it in. So if you're five foot tall, seven foot tall, if you want to deburr it standing, sitting, you move the part to accommodate you and you no longer have to accommodate your body type to fit this operation. Um, we've reduced significantly our ergonomic risk. Um, prior we had 17 risk factors and now we're down to three that are all just associated with the deeper process. Um, so we've reduced the manual lifting, the poor posture, the, the extended bends. Um, we also used a couple other industry standard tools, uh, the NIOSH and DF Ergo, and those have both been downgraded to a low risk operation. So it's been a huge savings from a safety perspective. We now have volunteers for the job, which is tremendous. And we have people that were willing to do this and you know, have said, I wish I would have taken that operation or that job you know, at the time. We've also seen some other productivity gains. Um, it's easier to do the job, so we see them doing it faster now. And they're also not borrowing other people from other areas to assist them with lifts. Quality's improved because they're no longer handling the part. There's the risk of damaging or dropping a part has been eliminated. And the cost of our solution was pretty minimal. What you see here is primarily made of scrap or repurposed material from our shop. We did buy a few components here. Um, we tried to be as simple as possible buying off the shelf so they were easily replaceable um, whenever possible. And then the majority of the cost was our tool room labor. You know, so the tool team, again, built this entirely in-house, um, designed entirely in-house. So you know, that's really the strong point of our solution here is our innovation you know, on our team, you know, putting this solution together, you know, teamwork ideas, and you know, driving it home to come up with a great solution.
This is our first one from GE Asheville. GE submits a lot every year, but this is the first time GE Asheville's ever entered the competition. All right, well, good luck to you guys. Thank you.